Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and in this video we are simplifying the search for Sombra. In this video I'm going to be going over everything that's happened so far in the Sombra ARG or alternate reality game that Blizzard has been playing with the community towards the potential announcement or something to do with Sombra. I'll try and make the Sombra search as simple as possible, summarise all the steps so far and what's happened, how things have been solved in a pretty simple way and some thoughts as to where it could all go from the current countdown. Now I'm no cryptographer, super mega spy or programming genius so I've tried to explain the things involved as I understand them from a layman's perspective. If you're talented in one of these fields and spot any mistakes in my understanding please let me know in the comments below. Okay let's go. Firstly let's summarise the history of Sombra before the ARG. Now Sombra goes back even to October the 15th 2015 when Ellerheim in a stream before the actual open beta for Overwatch announced showed the folder and had a little bit of a chat about heroes. Now he also showed a bunch of screens in Dorado, Dorado being very closely linked with Sombra. We can see the folder on the desk that is still there to this day with the name of Sombra alongside the name of Soldier 76. And we can also see the screens around the plant showing the Sombra protocol which is why the plant is apparently maybe shut down at this point in time. Ever since even pre-beta Sombra has been teased. Now the next step of this is on May 9th when the voice line where's Sombra when you need her was datamined and found by me. Hi mum. After that a teaser for Anna was released in Temple of Anubis a little bit later and a few people including myself thought that it might point to Sombra. Ah uh, oops. As more clues gradually became available on Anna Amari being a hero this Anubis image became ever more likely to be nothing Sombra related and was eventually shown to be her Shrike skin in a bit of a nod to Destiny he thinks. Now confusion still exists in the Overwatch community to this day on this long story short Anna and Sombra as far as we know are not related in any way shape or form and they are different entities or individuals. If Sombra is a person of course. Fast forward to July 12th 2016 and Arna's Origins video was released along with a bunch of teaser assets. Now by pausing this video at the 1 minute 16 and 2 minute 11 time marks a whole bunch of hexadecimal numbers were discovered. Here are the ones for 116. Taking this hex and converting it to ASCII, the most common format for text files on computers and the internet, gave this string of characters. Now some clever people who are into this kind of thing, there are a few different Sombra hunting groups and I'll detail them at the end, used a, a, something called a Zor cipher with the constant of 23 and this translated it into Spanish. So before I go through the Spanish, here's a quick explanation of a Zor cipher. It's a simple classical cryptographic cipher, the kind of thing that people are into code and problem solving may know well about. It's an additive cipher. Now what this means is that you can take a string of text and you can encrypt it, making it harder to read. The Zor function is applied to every character with a particular key. And that key affects how the text is jumbled up effectively. If you do know the key then you can apply the Zor function to the text just to decrypt it. It's like having the key to a lock that will undo all of the jumbling up that's been done. So that's the Zor cipher. Anyway the result is with 23 as the constant there's speculation probably that Sombra is going to be the 23rd so 23 is a reoccurring number in this Sombra hunt. The tr Spanish translates to she who has the information has the power. Repeating this process for the other cipher in the video gave the same Spanish spring but just with a couple of different letters at the end. The first string had Somb at the end and the second had Ra at the end. So Somb plus Ra equals Sombra. There's a bit of maths that hey even I can understand. After this jumping forward to July the 19th of this year the Arna dev update video was released. Now in this video some barcodes were found. If you took these barcodes turned the barcodes that were there into binary so ones and zeros effectively this was taken by someone clever and turned into pixels. So taking the barcodes changing them into binary ones and zeros changing them into pixels made a QR code. Now everyone can scan a QR code. When this code was scanned it gave the message of this in Spanish which translates to was that easy? Well now that I have your attention allow me to make things much more difficult. Sombra playing games with us there. Skip forward to August the 2nd and the next step of this game continued. The summer games were announced and in the summer games video if you watch very very carefully in this image of Tracer jumping through you can see in her blinking trail another cipher is actually visible in terms of a code. So this is in base 64. Base 64 very long story short is another form of binary ones and zeros to text encoding. It's a way of translating or interpreting binary into text. Now using a particular tool that some clever people from the Game Detectives wiki and community got onto, a bunch of people who love solving various kinds of puzzles particularly in games, created this output. Now this is encrypted. The salted header at the start of this particular string, that little bit salted there, means that the rest of the text is apparently actually encoded into open SSL. So this is a cipher, it requires both a key and an own cipher. So the salted bit is a clue that two different things were actually needed to solve this. Now the salt is added to encrypted data to ensure uniqueness. People managed to find this salt, so all they need was the password and the method of cipher. The community managed to narrow down the cipher that was actually needed by having a look at a hex dump of the actual string. The encrypted message was three bytes short of a full 
normal chunk of data. This was a good indicator that the cipher was a stream cipher and narrowed the list of different ciphers down a whole bunch. Now right now this particular line of inquiry is still unsolved. It's speculated that Blizzard actually jumped past this by giving hints in a different direction. However this is a mystery that could still be out there. Now obviously at the same time of this there is actually a whole bunch of other stuff in the North American version of the Summer Games video. These references are actually not visible in other versions of the trailer. They all indicate two directions and are tied with particular heroes. Remember this, this compass rose idea is going to be important in a few of the things that we discuss. Here's a brilliant summary from the Game Detectives Wiki showing the actual compass rows of all of the different heroes and images. We're now up to about the 4th to the 6th of August in our timeline, and it's at this point that the Arg Hunters started going slightly off the rails. In trying to solve the Tracer code, a lot of people were looking for other clues, and in Dorado, when some people looked up to the sky at the various texturing, they saw something that looked like artifacting in kind of a circular way. Now, I think it's probably because people have been looking at barcodes and similar such things, they thought they saw a similar pattern in this sky texture. Now, this is where people really went off the rails. They really went into trying to solve this sky code, as it became known as. It was tried to make into a code, various People ran programs, they tried to convert it into different text formats. Some people even tried making it into a song. Everything got so off the grid. By the 9th of August, there was a Dorado data mosh. Now, on the Overwatch media page, a new photo of the attacking spawn in Dorado was added. And you can see the lines and comparing this data mosh version to the original version, there's definitely some differences, indicating that it concealed some kind of hidden message. Now, data moshing is the act of hiding information inside a media file by editing its source code. And of course, sometimes this will have visual or auditory effects showing changes to the actual file. So the corruption here that we can see actually has a meaning. After comparing the original image against the different image with difference checking tools, it was found that certain English and Spanish characters had been replaced with exclamation marks, producing a Spanish sentence out of these replaced characters. Now, when translated into English, this says, why are you looking at the sky? The answer isn't over your heads, it's behind you. Sometimes you need to analyze your previous achievements. So that's Sombra and Blizzard with a fairly big clue saying, stop looking at the sky code. Guys, you're wasting your time. But the previous achievements part led people to have a look elsewhere. Guess Sky Song's not going to be getting to number one. Jumping on to the 12th of August, and people actually noticed in the new display on the Blizzard website of people's profile pages that there was an interesting achievement. Now, if you inspect elements on this achievement, you can just right click and do it in your browser. There's actually a commented line in the HTML code there in Spanish. Again, translating the Spanish, we see, damn, not bad. However, I'm getting bored. Let's try something new in the same direction. And then what appears to be just a string of code, text and characters. So this section of code was run by someone smart through a Vignere cipher. This is classic cryptography again. A 16th century French diplomat, Blaise de Vignere, encoded messages with a passphrase and the letters of the phrase determined how each letter was encrypted. Smart people put two and two together, and this is where the compass rose comes into effect. The passphrase for this was actually using the heroes in order of their positions on the compass rose. The phrase Tracer Torbjorn Winston Symmetra Diva Mercy Bastion Genji McCree, when used as a key, actually gave this URL once it was tidied up and spaces and various characters were removed. Akamai is a known media hosting company, and a lot of big companies use Akamai to host website images, videos, and that kind of thing. This is very clearly a link to the Blizzard media server. Going there, people found a Volskaya Industries image, and again this was data moshed compared to the original. The same techniques and program were used to compare the original to the new Volskaya image, and the differences resulted in the following output. Now there were a few different things going on here. Long story short, there were a lot of strings in the source code for this that appeared to be ASCII art. So by guessing, people managed to find out that if a new line was added every 59th character, then a skull emerged. Along with some text here, this is the skull that you've seen a bunch of in people's thumbnails and things recently, and the translation of the Spanish is, it seems you like these little games, why don't we play a real one? At this point, this was all a bit of a dead end, and no progress was made until early this week. A couple of days ago, a Discord user with the Game Detectives community called Majesty apparently was tipped off to a topic on the Blizzard boards. Now posted by Skycoder, a little bit of mick taking by Blizzard and Sombra there I think about the Skycode false trail. The name of the topic, if translated from binary, says 23. Again, this 23 number, maybe Sombra is the 23rd hero, it's a number that's recurred over and over in this ARG. The time posted on the forums was 23 hours, and started counting down. Now remember this countdown, again, we'll come back to it in a little bit. If you stay on this page for any particular period of time, the link is in my description below of this video, it soon begins to glitch and distort, turns a hue of purple, and then opens up a text box with a whole bunch of code in, just like this. 
So people cracked out the base 64 again, and surprise of surprises, this turns into another ASCII skull. People then obviously set to work comparing these two skulls. Both skulls were stripped of spaces in the characters, new characters were put into single lines of text with no spaces. After taking away bytes from both skulls, this text string was identified. Again, for the third time in this ARG, classic cryptology came into play. This is solvable with something known as a Caesar cipher. It's a substitution cipher. Very, very simply, each letter in the text that you want to change or encode or muddle up is replaced by another one in the alphabet, but a fixed amount of positions. So let's say, for example, I use the S letter A with a factor of two. C is two down the alphabet from A. Every A would be a C, every B would be a D, and so on and so forth. Unsurprisingly, related to Julius Caesar, who apparently used it in his private correspondence. The number 23 has been used a lot. Unsurprisingly, when these were shifted by 23 as the actual cipher number, we got some more Spanish. I promised you a game. I believe you game detectives, calling out the game detectives community, would call it a trailhead. Not to be downhearted, but a trailhead is obviously the point at where a trail begins. So another puzzle to sort out. Now these ending characters with the .html on, again, very much look like the end of a particular URL. So people took this back to the Blizzard media server that was used before. Unsurprisingly, they managed to get another image. Just of interest, Usa Ambas Calaveras translates to use both skulls. So Blizzard getting very, very specific in terms of their clues. Tried to make sure that people don't get too far off track again, I think. By using this, we got a really interesting video, which I'm going to show you here. Now I'll call you a few things out about this. If you actually look at the metadata of the video, then it has some more Spanish saying, you seem to be very interested in these heroes. Maybe you're interested to know some more details that I found out about them. And that very much relates to the video. We see Janina Kowalska, which is apparently a kind of Jane Doe or a common name in Polish. Judging by the images of this skull, it's very likely to be Anna Amari. You can see the iron skull wounds there caused by her confrontation with Widowmaker. Equally, if you look in the top right, the 50 to 60 years old age piece probably works out. It's meant to be, I think, a medical record of Anna Amari being taken into hospital after the injuries that she, she sustained on what was her final, for now, Overwatch mission. Now the next clue was actually within this video, and if you take a look at the bottom right, you can see this heartbeat pinging away. Now there are apparently a corresponding amount of lines in the bottom right to the letters of the alphabet. People just put a letter of the alphabet to each marker underneath, and they watched this little clip to see where the heartbeat was actually pinging. And that gave Moment in Crime as a word answer. Now, Moment in Crime is the name of a Crime Stoppers style show, which released actually ages before Overwatch. It was a short video talking about the Junkers being on their crime spree across the world, Junkrat and Roadhog going a little bit crazy. However, a momentincrime.com was registered as a website. People went to visit this site and found a bunch of stuff that was effectively talking about an automated email response, as if the website had been hacked. A couple of users, Majesty and Kraus, sent a mail to tips at a momentincrime.com and got an automatic response, which I'm showing here, which seems to be being hacked by Sombra in version 1.7. We can also see a table of codes or what look like timestamps here, as well as an additional secondary string underneath. Taking these timestamps as AABBCC, where AA is the skull number, BB is the row, and CC is the column, actually produces a 5v5 grid. Now, this particular grid actually hints towards a particular kind of, again, classic cryptography. It's a very classic cipher called a bifid cipher. This was invented in 1901 by Felix Delastel, and it combines a couple of different things. The transposing, the moving of figures like the Caesar cipher with a regular pattern, and also an encoding square created by the ancient Greek historian Polybius. Now what this encoding square does that we've been given actually allows you to take letters of the alphabet and break it down into more basic components. So it's another additional layer of making it complicated. When you put the two together, you get this particular string. When you get that out of Leetspeak, it effectively just says Sombra, information is power Sombra. There we go, a bit of a dead end again. Meanwhile, the countdown on the forum post reached zero. And when it reached zero, the moment in crime page was updated, saying establishing connection, the Sombra protocol version 1.9 has started and transmitting information to active Omnix. It was only at 2%. A comment was also added at this time in the source code of the page saying, well done, you have my password. Hacking this television program was meaningless. Wait for what is coming. That at the moment brings us up to August 26th and the present day of this ARG. I'm finally going to have a little think about where we're at right now and what might come next. The Moment in Crime page that I've linked is still counting up, just very, very slowly. It is not counting up at a uniform rate corresponding with time passing in real life. It's still on 5% at the moment, and it may not move for a while, for however long. We cannot tell when it's going to reach 100%. What will happen when it actually ends? Well, it's pretty likely by this stage that Sombra is a new hero. The number of references to 23 in the ARG, 
makes it quite solid that she could be Hero 23. As for her abilities, well, her hacking interests are strongly confirmed from this ARG. We already know from Anna's Old Soldiers comic that she's working with Reaper and by association on the radar of Talon, if not working for or with them directly. Beyond that, anything we think is pure speculation. Now, there are some dead-to-mind lines that people have grabbed not too long ago that show that Blizzard has recorded sound lines for heroes around detecting stealth. No, I can't see you, but I know you're there. Something is not feeling right. Hey! Where are you hiding? Perhaps Sombra could grant temporary stealth to other heroes or herself, but we'll just have to see. Finally, for those hoping for the countdown to finish quickly and for a Sombra reveal soon, personally, I'm not too convinced on that. Here are a few reasons why. In interviews with Eurogamer just after release, Jeff Kaplan said that releasing Mei, Diva, and Genji all at the same time was way too disruptive for the game doing beta and that heroes would be released one at a time for a while until the game stabilizes. Let's have a quick think about since release when we've had content launched and released. From the launch in May, we've had Arna in July, so that was roughly two months after launch. After that, in August, we've had the Summer Games, which was a mini event that the team must have also been working on. We now know that we're going to receive Eichenwald, the new map based in Germany, in September. And of course, we've also seen on the PTR a whole bunch of emotes, balance changes, and more. So this is two months from the Arna release in July. There are monthly content releases going at the moment. What could fall in October? If it's not Sombra, what could it be? I think we already know this from a few data lines that have been dropped, and even the Mercy and Torbjorn image that we saw in Recall. I'm pretty sure that our October release of content is going to be a Halloween-themed event. There are skins that could come out. There's already Genji's line that people have picked out in-game that talks about his Halloween costume costume being a cyborg ninja. My Halloween costume? Cyborg Ninja. It feels very strongly that Halloween will be in October. And it doesn't mean that two pieces of content can't be released in the same month. It's quite likely that Blizzard seem to have a monthly sprint cycle or similar. For this reason, I don't think we're going to get more than one content drop in a month, and October feels like it's going to be Halloween. So, what does that lead us to? Well, November is BlizzCon. Big announcements are always made at BlizzCon, and indeed Diva, Genji, and May were all announced at BlizzCon last year. My money would be on the fact that we're going to see a somber announce at BlizzCon this year. As a result, I don't think that there's going to be anything massive in terms of developments in October for sure. I don't think that we're going to see an announce in September or October, but who knows, I could be absolutely wrong. Here's hoping, eh? I'd love to see a hero a lot earlier. Phew, that's a summary of the Sombra search so far. I'm pretty much running out of S's at this point. If you like this video, please do check out some of my other game theory and actual canon Overwatch lore videos, voice lines interactions, and a whole bunch more. I love Overwatch lore story and anything to do with it. Please check it out on the channel. Do like, subscribe and comment as well, and tell me what you think about Sombra in the comments below. Cheers for tuning in, hopefully see you soon. I've been Hammy as always, take it easy. Hammy as always.